Today, we're looking at support structures in Simplify 3D. Supports are used to help construct models with overhangs or features that aren't supported from below. Because 3D parts are printed layer by layer, when we print the bottom of Hulk's arm here or when we print the layers below his chin, there aren't any layers underneath. So to help with this, we add breakaway support structures so that these layers aren't printing over thin air, and then we just throw them away when we're done. We're going to walk through the different ways to create and modify these support structures, and we'll also have some fun seeing how easy it is to remove Simplify 3D supports without damaging the print. So we all know how important it is to save money for the future. Luckily, I found this Hulk piggy bank to help me put some cash away. So here's the slot back here where I can stash all of my loose change. So let's take a look at how to add supports to this model. Simplify 3D makes this easy. Just open the process settings and click the checkbox next to generate support. Let's generate a preview to see how these supports will be constructed. Now when you click the checkbox next to generate support in the process settings, the software will automatically add supports to the selected model based on the stock settings from your printer profile. So now that we're in the preview, the first thing I'm going to do is change the preview coloring from movement speed to feature type, which shows each element of my print in a different color. So here, supports are in gray. So you can see on our model that with one click, you've added support and you'd be ready to go. But one of the great features of Simplify 3D is that you're able to fully customize your support structures. So let's go back to the interface and we'll open the support generation window by going to tools, customize support structures, or by clicking the icon on the right-hand toolbar. Let's walk through each of the settings in this window. The first section is automatic placement. And this section will automatically place support where the software thinks the model needs it. So it's going to be very similar to what we just did by checking the generate support checkbox in the process settings. So if we click generate automatic supports, you'll notice that these pillars appear under your model. These represent the location where support material will be placed. So if we slice, you're going to see that the model looks very similar to the way it looked before. So you can see how the support structures look very much the same. It's also worth pointing out that even though they looked like individual pillars on the previous screen, these support pillars actually merge to form a network of interconnected support material. You might also notice that there's a lot of support material here inside the part. The problem being is that this slot back here is the only way to get things into and out of the piggy bank. This particular piggy bank is like the good old days of piggy banks where you actually have to smash the bank to get the money out. Somehow seems very appropriate for the Hulk. Still, it's going to be pretty tough to get these supports out. Luckily, there's a setting for that. So let's go back to the support generation window and you'll notice the first option here is support type. And you have two choices, normal or from build platform only. Normal means you'll get support everywhere that has a steep overhang. And this is probably fine for most parts. But for some special circumstances, like this one, we have another support type called from build platform only. This will only generate support that touches the build plate. So, for example, if you have a completely enclosed cavity, like in this piggy bank example, or if you have a small channel that runs through the inside of the part, the support structures for those features wouldn't be able to reach the build platform. So, if we use this option, we wouldn't get support material in any of those locations. This is really useful for us here, since the support structures inside here are going to be very difficult to remove. So, if we have from build platform only selected, and we generate automatic supports, you'll see that all the material that was inside this cavity has disappeared because it wasn't touching the build plate. However, the supports underneath Hulk's arms and his back that were touching the build plate will still be there. And if I switch it back to normal, we're back to where we started. So now let's look at the next setting, support pillar resolution, which determines the size of these pillars. To illustrate this for you, Let's take the size up to seven millimeters. You'll see that you have fewer pillars, but that they're larger. Then if we take it down to two millimeters, you'll see you have a lot more pillars, but they're smaller. You can think of support pillar resolution as a paintbrush. Using a thick paintbrush gets the job done quickly and easily. 
but you may not be able to get the same level of detail. A smaller brush is more precise, but can be more difficult to work with. So, for large parts with simple features, you can use a higher pillar resolution. For small parts, or parts that have small, detailed features, it's best to reduce the support pillar size. So let's zoom in here on Hulk's face, which has quite a bit of detail. If we were to be using a 6 millimeter support resolution, we wouldn't be able to accurately capture much of the detail around his mouth. The support pillars are just too large compared to the size of the feature. However, if we bring the resolution back down to 2 millimeters, we're able to capture a lot more of the detail here. So, to reiterate, for parts that are small or highly detailed, consider using a smaller pillar resolution. For larger or simpler parts, you can probably use a larger pillar resolution. The last setting here is the max overhang angle, which determines at which angle the software will begin generating supports. Smaller numbers, like 30, mean you'll have more support structures, and this would be useful if your printer can't handle printing much of an overhang. Larger numbers, like 70 for example, mean fewer support structures, which works when your printer can handle a larger overhang. If you're not sure what your printer is capable of, 45 degrees is a good starting point. However, if you want to figure out the best number to use, there are plenty of test prints out there, like this one, which tries 10 different overhang angles to determine exactly what your printer can handle. So, if you want to have a good general starting point for supports, begin with the automatic placement section. If you want to change where supports are placed, come down to the manual placement options. For example, clicking remove existing supports will allow you to get rid of supports that you don't want. Simply click on the ones that you want to remove. Or to add new supports, click add new support structures. And you'll see that this gray pillar appears. Just move it where you want to place supports and click. You can see how the pillar size really makes an impact here. For example, when I'm using this small pillar resolution, it's a bit like trying to cover a large area with a small paintbrush. It might take me some time. But if I make the resolution bigger, maybe five millimeters, I can add large areas of support a lot more quickly. So you can use whatever pillar size you need to get the job done. If you accidentally add or remove a support, just undo by using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-Z or Command-Z on a Mac. Many users prefer to start with automatic placement and then selectively add or delete supports. Here are your options for saving support structures, but you don't really need to use these because the software already saves this for you. For example, if you were to save a factory file, that would automatically include your support structures. If for some reason you don't want any supports for this model at all, you would just clear all supports and that would remove all the supports that you've placed with this window. And then make sure that the generate support option is disabled within the process settings. So now we've printed our Hulk model and I'm going to go ahead and remove the supports so you can see how easily they come off. So you just kind of squeeze the support, give it a little wiggle, and off it comes. And now I'll show you the other side on his fist here. Again, you just kind of wiggle the support and it snaps right off. So I just want to show you a close-up of what the support material actually looks like. So you can really see that it's that interconnected network of support material. And as you can see, it's even kind of flexible. So this unique support generation feature is what allows us to create great 3D prints like this one. So there you have it. Simplify 3D makes it easy to customize support structures so they fit your model properly and break away cleanly, resulting in a better 3D printed part.